All right, in this video we're going to see how to simplify polynomial expressions. And we're just going to extend what we've already done with the linear and quadratic expressions to exponents that are bigger, like exponents of 3 and 4. Uh, one thing uh, we want to start off by doing is if we have any the terms inside parentheses and the whole set of parentheses has an exponent, we're going to make sure to write that out as a product. So in this one we do have that. And uh, remember exponent of 2, that is just multiplying something by itself. Right. So 4t all squared is 4t times 4t. So write that out as a product. And we can go ahead and then uh, simplify that by multiplying. And we'll get 4 times 4 is 16. And t times t is t squared. All right. Uh, now we're going to use the distributive property and distribute to clear parentheses. Uh, so we're going to distribute the 16t squared. Right, we're going to distribute that to the 16t squared times 2t. 16 times 2 is 32. And t squared times t is t cubed. Uh, then we distribute the 16t squared to the 1, so we just get plus 16t squared. Now we're going to distribute the negative. Remember when you have a negative or subtraction sign out front of parentheses, you can think of this as being a negative 1 times the terms in there. So multiply each term inside parentheses by negative 1, or uh, just switch the sign on those. Since all three are positive, we're just going to make all three of those negative. And now we've distributed. The last thing to do is to combine like terms. And like terms still has the same definition, the terms need to have the same variable and the same exponent. We can just now have like terms with exponents of 3 or more. Uh, but our exponent of 3 term is all by itself. The uh, only two that we can combine are actually the quadratic terms. 16t squared minus 4t squared, which gives us 12t squared. And then we're all simplified. So there's our final simplified expression, 32t cubed plus 12t squared minus 2t minus 11. Now let's look at another example. All right, let's look at another example. And uh, in this one, we have no exponents around any of the parentheses. So we will skip that first step. We do need to distribute, and uh, there's a lot to distribute in this one. I think the best way to do it is to distribute the 2x plus 1 to each term. So let's distribute 2x plus 1. to the 3x squared, to the negative x, and then to the 4. Now, we need to distribute the 3x squared to the 2x and the 1. So we do 3x squared times 2x, and that should give us 2 times 3 is 6, and x squared times x is x cubed. Okay. 
And then 3x squared times the 1 is just 3x squared. Now we're going to distribute the negative x. So negative x times 2x is negative 2x squared. And negative x times positive 1 is a negative x. Finally, we'll distribute the 4. 4 times 2x. 4 times 2x should give us 8x, and 4 times 1 should give us 4. All right, so we've got all the distributing done, and now we just need to combine like terms. And you can see we have the quadratic terms are like terms. So 3x squared minus 2x squared should just give us 1x squared. And the linear terms are like terms, uh, negative x and positive 8x. So 8x minus x gives us 7x. And the cubic or third degree term is by itself, and the constant term is by itself, so we're all done. Our simplified expression is 6x cubed plus x squared plus 7x plus 4. And we saw factoring before as a sort of reversal of the distributing process. And it's the same with higher order polynomials. Um, I'm going to show a couple of different factoring situations. Uh, the first one is where we have three terms. And uh, if there's a greatest common factor, sometimes we can get this to be a linear and quadratic factors. In this one, you want to think of the largest number you can divide evenly into all three of these terms. And if you look at these numbers, 6, 3, and 45, they can all be divided by 3. And if you look at the variables, you have three factors of x in the first term, two factors of x in the second term, and one in the last. One. So they all have one factor of x that they can sort of spare. So the common factor of all this is 3x. And uh, what's left if we divide each of these divide each of these terms by 3x? Uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And x cubed, if you take away one of those, you'll have an x squared. Right. Um, negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. And x squared, take away one of those x's, you'll just have an x. Negative 45 divided by 3 is negative 15, and uh, we take away the x. And you can check by distributing that, in fact, you can go from the second line here to the first line. Now, if the remaining factor, this one right here, is a quadratic trinomial, we can actually factor that again. So there's more factoring to be done there. That 3x is good to go, uh, but we can actually write the 2x squared minus x minus 15 as a product of two binomials. So if you remember how this works, we would multiply the first and last numbers, 2 and negative 15, and get negative 30. And we look for two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add up to negative 1. Uh, in this case, those two numbers are negative 6 and positive 5. So we can split that middle term of negative x up into a negative 6x and a positive 5x. Now we can factor the first and second pairs separately. Uh, the common factor with the first two terms is 2x. And if you divide 2x squared by 2x, you will just get x. And if you divide negative 6x by 2x, you will get a negative 3. And the common factor 
common factor in the second pair of terms is 5. So we'll factor off of 5 and uh, you'll leave the x and 15 divided by 5 is 3. Remember we do want those remaining pieces to match up and you can see that they do both x minus 3. Um, now we can factor off that x minus 3. So if you factor that off, you're going to have a 2x plus 5 left over. So factors into three pieces there. Let's look at another example. Well, of course, you can, you can check this by distributing. Go ahead and distribute the 3x. And you'll get 3x squared. And 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. And then we can distribute that to the 2x. And to the 5. And then we just distribute the 2x here, and we'll get a 6x cubed uh, minus 18x squared. And distributing the 5, you'll get a 15x squared and a 45x. And if you just combine like terms, you see that we have the negative 18x squared and the positive 15x squared, and those will add up to a negative 3x squared, bringing us right back to what we started off with. All right. Our last example does not have a common factor. So that first step can't be done. Uh, you can look at these and see they don't all have an x, and they don't all have a number you can divide by other than 1, uh, at least divide evenly. So go to step 3. If we have four terms, we can try what we did after we split the middle term up. And that is, just look for a common factor in the first and second pair. Uh, if you look at the first pair here, the common factor is x squared. Right? So you can divide both of those by x squared and you'll have an x plus 1. And if you look at the second pair, you can both be divided by a negative 9. So factoring that off and you'll have negative 9 times x plus 1. Again, check this by distributing. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. negative 9 times x is negative 9x. negative 9 times 1 is negative 9. Um, since these x plus 1 terms are the same, we can now factor that off. And it will leave us with x plus 1 times x squared minus 9. Okay. You can check by distributing that that will, in fact, work. Um, we're going to be using this factoring for the same reasons we did before, is that when we factor, you can then, if this was an equation set equal to 0, these individual pieces we could solve, whereas the original thing set equal to 0 we could not solve.